Welcome to the Social Distance Reading Series, a project of the Vermont School and Green Mountains Review. I'm Philip Metris. Welcome to my office. This is my new book, Shrapnel Maps, published by Copper Canyon Press. Welcome to my space, my office. This is the last day that I can be in here before we're going on our quarantine due to the state of Ohio's um, initiative to increase social distancing. Perhaps the term social distancing itself needs to be interrogated lightly. We, what we don't need is distance from each other socially. We need physical distance from each other and we need connection more than ever. And I hope that perhaps in this reading today you'll get a sense of maybe one of the places that's really important to me and that's important in many ways to many people around the world and that is um, Palestine and Israel. I'm going to read a couple paragraphs from my afterword, which will give you a little bit of an introduction into maybe my thinking about the book and what it fundamentally concerns. It reminds me that really foundationally in this book is a consideration about who is our neighbor and how we go about treating our neighbor. So the afterword. Shrapnel Maps is my journey to clarify the question of belonging in a land with so many names that to try to speak them all is to become crowded with history. Canaan, Canaan, the land of Israel, Eretz Yisrael, Palestine, Palestine, the Holy Land, the Levant, the Middle East. The journey began at our family dinner table, questioning my sister in the late summer of 1993. She had just returned from Birzeit University near Ramallah and burned with stories. Settlers shooting at crowds, checkpoints, house demolitions, prison torture, a litany of atrocity as if she'd been flung into an upside down world behind a mirror. I wondered if she'd been brainwashed. It was the opposite of what I'd read in the newspapers. Her courage to stand in the truth of what she saw compelled me to look further. Subsequent fr friendships with Palestinians and Jews corroborated, complicated, and added texture to her stories. My sister's path led our family to Palestine a decade later. A Concordance of Leaves, the poem I'll share with you now, details the 2003 visit to Tura and the West Bank for her wedding. My gratitude to Majid, his family, and the people of Tura for their generosity and kindness that they showed to us. This is a poem called A Concordance of Leaves. It's in many parts and this will take us through this journey. A Concordance of Leaves. Warak. Because he drove the highway north as if across the pages of Caesarea, Nazareth, Galilee, Rami, Sunglassed cabbie born in Al Quds, dead ringer for Travolta circa Saturday Night Fever, lost the way from Ben Gurion. In jammed Israeli traffic, he called out in Hebrew to unknown cousins in cars, so close you could share a kiss, asking for directions to Hadera, nearest our destination, not our destination, our destination outside their map of kin and ken. And because we swam in traffic for hours, lost, lapping Haifa twice, my bladder began to ache. Before the highway split, he pulled off. I bouldered hillside until barbed wire an unknown tower and pissed, half in ecstasy, half in terror. A sniper's bullet would chauffeur me from this place, pants undone, penis in hand. All I could hear was, Wind, wind passing beneath, rush hour, older than the rocks I darkened. On drying racks, tobacco leaves swim. Wind turns the pages of the book. We can only read in the rough translation of my soon-to-be brother-in-law. And this is the brother of my soon-to-be brother-in-law, inhaling through the straw of his cigarette holds it between 
ring and middle fingers palm up. The unseen and inaccessible sea caresses our strange faces, blind and we wait for our lines to be read. And this is the cemetery with the father of his fathers, 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 fathers buried, bodies marked by broken stone incisors. Among neighbors, we sip sage tea, maramilla, named after the mother of God, for sage slaked her desert tongue, and now a cousin comes, footfalls lifting white dust from the mouth of that abandoned quarry, its Jurassic cranes and rusted conveyors hauling nothing now. The last time you rose from the bed of hills and swales, sister, you left your new love at Tel Aviv, history holding him at passport control. He passed an olive necklace to you, saying, a country is more important than one person. You'd carry its quandary ten years around your wandering. And now this country draws you the way olive roots welcome far water. Sister, soon you will be written alongside your future husband in the book of books. And though our father's passport held aloft on the only road will not stop the Sabra tank, you will find another way through rutted olive orchards. And soon new sisters will soften your feet with oil. Of barbed wire I clear a line sharp enough to ribbon the flesh and the village where Amar nests in his palm, a bird whose wing is broken. He strokes and holds to his lips, coffee with cardamom and the circle of men. All day nearby, some machine putts as if trying to set the whole village to motion. It won't start, but something is happening or will. And our family will ask so many questions, we will be called the Question Factory. And you, my future brother, will write your answers with my slowly disappearing hand. The Question Factory asks, what is a dunum? Answer, slowly disappearing land. The Question Factory asks, what is that line on your skull? Answer, a failed poem by one who tries to write over everything, already scratched out, written over. The question factory asks, why do you smile? Because I still have my teeth. Where are the dolls missing eyes? In the back of my mind, I believe. In what? I believe I hear a song. Why do you laugh? Because I still have my tongue. There is a song, and yet I hear no singing. Today, Alyum, my friend Sadiq, sweet, beautiful, Helwa, tree, Shajara, shame, forbidden, Haram. My name is Ismi. Listen, Isma. It means Yani, here, Han, Zaytun. Consider the olive. It gnarls as it grows into itself, a veritable thicket. It throws up obstacles to the light to reach the light, a crooked path in the air. While beneath our sight, it wrestles the rock, wrests water from whatever trickles beneath. It doesn't worry it looks like hell, refuses to straighten for anyone. Each spring offers itself meat to be eaten, first brambles than olives. For throwing a Molotov at a bus, Muhammad spent a month his head buried in burlap. Now my new brother cradles his skull. His bulk tiptoes the new house, no doors on the frames, nowhere and nothing to hide. 
He sweeps all the noise with insistent silence and hands tied in knots of knot, knowing what to do with suddenness. Now his wife Amal and her black eyes gleam in the dark room. To her breast she quiets Carmel, which means God's vineyard. Scarved sisters are radiant with wide mouths and waves and teeth and singing, and though there is the great unhappiness framed in silent, unsmiling faces, hammered on insides of houses, watching over all preparations, night is lifting, the women are drumming, the tabla, their voices inviting a heart to break itself and open a space another could nest inside. Because there is, there is a word for love in this tongue that entwines two people as one. And there is a word for love in this tongue that nests in the chambers of the heart. And a word for love in this tongue that wanders the earth. For love in this tongue in which you lose yourself in this tongue. And a word that carries sorrow within its vowels. And a word for love that exudes from your pores. And a word for love that shares its name with falling. And though a careless assistant will enter the darkroom unbidden and burn the wedding negatives, something larger than wave hovers and boys in its wake, large as the sun as it breaks into hills, as if coaxed by the singers to hold another's shoulder or hand off our hands to another and sway our branches and stamp the dear earth so hard it feels we are lifting together its trembling chest. And having been warned to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, I, the undersigned, do hereby swear the sun-cured page of each Tobacco leaf awaits to be crushed and burned into lungs. Each olive tree has a thousand eyes that ripen into sight, and the pomegranates of Tura are planets. If to Bethlehem we must pass through Wadi al Nar, if your license plates are painted blue and black, if your permit permits no passage across bypass highways, if from a distance the road carves aleph's or aleph's, if no man's land is where men live who have no land, if you lower your windshield, sunshield, and block the hilltop settlement, if Wadi al Nar is the valley of fire, if we must travel beneath the level of our eventual grave, if we arrive and they ask, How are you? we are to say, thank God. And though the border guard will advise us, this is a dangerous time to visit. And though we had to lie and say we were tourists and not guests at our sister's wedding to spare ourselves the special interrogation at Ben Gurion, and beyond the wall emerge blinking into the light of a modern Oz, blooming with sprinklered English lawns, the dancers in their purple spangled parachute pants will turn wheels in the dust until the dust is a violet fire. And though the checkpoints hunker in bunkers and Uzis with Uzis will raise them at our unwitting arrival and cause us to lower cameras. And though hawkers hawk songbirds at Kalandia checkpoint where empty bags tumble free between the fences of no man's land and the lines of the people are mute with waiting the Ataba singers will arrive in the village and name check our families. Marhaba mattress, marhaba, marhaba baddie, marhaba. And though some seaside cafe will split into glassy shards of people, these people will have had nothing to do with it. The bulldozers will doze their rows so that every road ends in a wall. Every car will off-road through olive groves, and though we won't see the sea, the wind will haul it, and the whole village will arrive at the village until the village will be a living map of itself, actual size. And though there is a boy whose cheek is a scar and no father, his eyes like broken eggs, the children will flock to every flat roof to watch the village become the village and see the wedding from enough distance it looks like a story that could be entered and see the men pin paper money to the suit of the groom until he's feathered with future and though everyone will eat and eat again some miracle of lambs 
And though the bride's arms and legs will itch with arabesques and scripts, a second skin won't be scratched away. And though her mother will be angry, the women and children will wait until all the men have been served, and even the bride plays a role she only learns on hennaed heels. And though tradition is an invisible author, only the old hands here. And though the sun will be too bright for the bride to see beyond her own eyes, and though the bullet in the groom will begin to hatch in his side, and the stitches in his skull will singe another verse in the book of dreams, and though the bride's questions will beak their shells years from now, now, now let there be dancing in circles, let the village become arms flung, drawing bodies to bodies, and let heads nod and eyes widen, which we translate as meaning, accept us, Fadl, congratulations, Mabruk, how much, Adesh Badak, I don't understand, Anamishfahim, tomorrow, Bukra, apricots, Mishmish, tomorrow when the apricots ripen, Bukra fil Mishmish, tomorrow never comes, Bukra fil Mishmish, ready? Yalla, let's go, Yalla. You, my sister, you, my brother, outside the walls in the wind, if Aristophanes was right and we walk the world in search of a split infinitive of to love, if two outside the walls in the wind, we should sing outside the walls in the wind. You, my sister, you, my brother, outside the walls in the wind, and let our echo ring. like strapping a small bomb to your third finger, that ring about which we could not speak upon our arrival and departure from the country of memory where we left you, sister, among the fragile projectiles inside the book whose pages the wind riffles, searching for a certain passage. Thanks for being with me. This is from Shrapnel Maps, published by Copper Canyon Press. It is available wherever books are sold. Have a good one.